Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. This is Daniel White IV, and for my father, Daniel White III, with the Second Coming Watch update. This is update number 450. Let's take a quick look at today's prophecy-related headlines, which point towards the Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First, according to the Associated Press, Iranian state television says a magnitude 5.5 earthquake has killed one person and injured 30 in a small town in southern Iran. The quake struck early Thursday morning in the town of Bastak, about 1,200 kilometers south of the capital, Tehran. It says many of the town buildings were damaged and that rescue workers were on the scene. It also reported several aftershocks in the region of about 50,000 residents. Iran sits on a series of seismic fault lines and experiences one slight earthquake a day on average. Second, according to the Jerusalem Post, while Hezbollah remains entangled in the Syrian conflict, one of its top field commanders warned in an interview with the British newspaper Guardian on Thursday that it would behoove Israel to remain on alert. The commander said none of their borders are safe now, and this is not a good thing for them. They cannot be happy with the momentum anywhere in the region, especially in Syria. Egypt is perhaps the only border that gives them comfort. The rest are outside of their control. Third, according to Reuters and AFP, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has stated that the Korean Peninsula will be engulfed in a massive nuclear disaster if war breaks out there again, warning the U.S. that it will not be safe in the event of a conflict. In his New Year message broadcast on state television, Kim said, We are faced with a dangerous situation in which a small accidental military clash can lead to an all-out war. Kim added that he would not beg for peace and vowed to protect the impoverished but nuclear-armed North with strong self-defense measures against enemies. Fourth, according to a recent study, Christianity dominates the United Nations and more diversity is needed to increase non-Christian representation in world peacemaking. Research undertaken by Professor Jeremy Corrett with colleagues from the University of Kent's Department of Religious Studies, has revealed that more than 70% of religious non-government organizations at the UN are Christian, and that there is historical privilege in allowing the Vatican a special observer status, as both a state and a religion. The report, called Religious NGOs and the United Nations, calls for greater awareness, transparency, and equality in the way religious NGOs operate within the UN and more emphasis on religious tolerance. The report also asks for greater understanding of how religion enhances and constrains human rights. It provides evidence that funding limits other religious traditions from establishing NGO work at the United Nations. Fifth, according to Reuters, China's first aircraft carrier has successfully finished a series of tests during a training mission in the disputed South China Sea and has returned to port. Last month's drills off the coast of Hainan Island marked not only the first time China has sent a carrier into the South China Sea, but the first time it has maneuvered with the kind of strike group of escort ships U.S. carriers deployed. After two decades of double-digit increases in the military budget, China's admirals plan to develop a full blue-water navy capable of defending growing economic interests as well as disputed territory in the South and East China Seas. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, 27, For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Our second coming quote for today is from John Chrysostom. He said, In the first advent, God veiled his divinity to prove the faithful. In the second advent, he will manifest his glory to reward their faith. You can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. If you are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by receiving him as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live eternally with Him. Pray and ask Him to come into your heart today, and He will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator, when he said, Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you.